You're welcome to be seated, ladies. And um, I hope you are doing, going to do something nice for us on Father's Day. So I made it expensive on Mother's Day because Father's Day is coming. Amen. So we set the ladies up this year. So I hope you are going to be blessed today, ladies. I hope your, your husband is taking you out to the best restaurant, getting you a manicure, a pedicure, uh, a facial. This is the day to ask Him for great things. Are you there? Come on, and the women say, Can I just have anybody that can support this morning? First and foremost, I want to encourage you today that um, first thing, Ephesians chapter number 4, verse number 29, just comes to my heart as I even walked onto the platform. The Bible says, Let no one wholesome speech come out of your mouth. I want to encourage you as families today, and especially as men and women, husband and wife, let no unwholesome words come out of your mouth towards one another. Because when God has placed you together, God's plan for a healthy community looks like family. An unhealthy family, unhealthy community. Unhealthy communities, unhealthy nation. So let no unwholesome words proceed out of your mouth. It's not worth it. Rather, let your mouth be a building site towards your husband and your wife. Amen. Speak blessing over one another. Speak to edify one another. Speak to uplift one another. Speak to let somebody rise. Never break down and never be a part of the accuser that tears down the image of Christ in somebody else. Rather, let the image of Christ be behold by your tongue. And, and be of those that love your husband, love your wife unconditionally. Come on, guys. Are you there? I really want to encourage both the men and the women to do so because revival looks like family. And God wants a whole family. Everybody there? Are you okay? And as, as we go into, into Scripture this morning, I'm not going to be long for the sake of time. I just want us to understand one or two things that is very, very important here. And I'm going to go to the book of Genesis, chapter number 2, verse number 18. And then I'm going to jump to Genesis chapter number 2 and verse number 21. Verse number 18 says the following. And the Lord God said, it is not good for man that he should be alone. For I will make him a helper comparable to him. Verse number 21 says, and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam. And he slept, and he took one of his ribs, please note that, and closed up the flesh in its place. Please note, he took one of the ribs, not his feet. A woman's place is not under, his hus under her husband's feet, but at his side. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a womb man. Save me, womb man. Okay? A man of a womb is a womb man. Just for the clarity of biology, a man with a womb is a woman. And he brought her to the man. This is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. So she shall be called woman because she has been taken out of man. Now I want you to understand simply this morning that when God created man, God was the source to man. So whatever God created, He created Himself to be the resource or to the source to it. When God created woman, He created woman with a source. Her source is a man. Are you okay? Because when a, the Bible says that a man leaves his household, the Bible never declares that a woman shall leave his father and his mother. The Bible says a man leaves his father and his mother. Why does a man leave his father and his mother? Because a man should become a source by which another woman or woman can come and be attached to. Well, let me reword it and say it like this. A woman should be never without a source. Come on, are you guys okay? Let me use an example. When a, when a father walks a daughter down the aisle and he gets to the man to be, the woman just switches sources. 
she switches from the father who was the source to the husband who is becoming the source. Are you guys there? Are you getting what I'm saying? It is important to understand that a woman never is supposed to be without a source. God made it to be resourced and all the ladies should say amen. Uh, and I want us to understand this because this is the principle of dowry, for example. The principle of payment, the principle of down payment. Because a man should understand that the woman that he gets is of high worth in the eyes of God. Because God is Father, right? And if God is our Father and God is your Father to, to a woman, we have to understand a woman, again I say, never switches that, never, never, never is without source. She just switches source because the man should become the source. Let me go into the scripture. I want to give you just simple, just simple uh, illustrations this morning. The first thing that God made for man was the presence. Man was made for the presence of God. Save me presence. Okay, the first thing that God made for man or the first thing that God placed man in is the presence. Without the presence, man is going nowhere. We need the presence of God in our lives. Amen. Second thing, very, very simple. When God made man, He made him in the presence and then He gave him an instruction. He, he told him, go and work. Save me, work. He told him, go and work. The, first, the third thing that He told man is He told man, go and cultivate. Save me, cultivate. Now I want you to listen to me carefully. A man that is not in the presence, a man that does not work, a man that doesn't cultivate, that man should not have a woman. I'll say it again. A man that is not a man on the pre of the presence, a man that is not a man that can work, a man that is a man that cannot cultivate, that man should be alone. Because cultivation means improvement. You must be able to improve that that you receive. If you cannot improve it, you have got no business to marry it. Let me say that again. If you cannot improve that woman, if you cannot speak life over that woman, if you cannot improve what a father did, you have got no business with that woman. A man's job is to improve a woman. It's interesting that, that for me that so many, men, so many women wants to marry a man out of the presence and try to drag him into the presence. No, a man should be a king, priest and prophet. You are not a man's savior. There's only one savior. His name is Jesus Christ. So you can't save. What you can do, of course, you can pray. I understand that. But many times people get married and they say, oh, I'll fix him. No, you won't. That's the Holy Spirit's job. Are you there? Ladies, listen to me. Look for a man that is in love with the presence of the Lord. Look for a man that can work, that is not lazy. Look for a man that can improve you, that can love you, that can hold you, that can caress you. Look for a man that knows who he is. Look for a man that has an identity. Look for a man that has a destiny. Look for a man that has a vision because that man can be a man. Please note that ladies, you should become a helpmate, not a footstool. But you cannot be a helpmate if the man doesn't have a vision. I want to say in 2024, when you, before you get interested into anybody, you have to ask a lot of questions. Ask that husband to be, ask that, that girl to be, ask them questions. Because the questions you don't ask is the questions gonna, that's going to question you. Tell them, how do you handle pressure? Tell me about your prayer life. Tell me about your word life. 
Tell me about your credit score. Tell me how you handle money. You can love them, hold them, caress them, and they can have blue eyes all day long. But brother and my sister, I'm telling you, if they are bad with money, if they've got bad debt, bad history, bad temperament, bad attitude, bad, th bad things in their lives, you're going to carry that bad stuff with you, with those blue eyes. So date number one, ask the question, flip those questions out. Say, hey, what's your credit score? <laughs> question number two, how's your, your bank balance? Question number three, tell me, how is your temperament? Question number four, are you going to worship the Lord all the days of your life? Question number five, do you know the Bible? Where is the book of Matthew? Where is the book of Malachi? Where is the book of Zechariah? Where is the book of Habakkuk? Where is the book of Nahum? I want to know who you are and what is your intentions. Do you want one baby, two babies, three babies, four babies, five babies? Are you going to take care of me? Are you going to buy me a house? Are you going to buy me a car? I am of worth. I've been bought by the blood of the Son of the living God. I want to know who I am about to get married to. Do I have some support here this morning? Ask the questions. And when you are married for 10, 15 years and they pick up a little bit of weight, hey, don't criticize. Stand up, brother. Say, come on, honey, we're going to run today. Come, I'm going to go with you. I'm going to buy that treadmill for you. I'm going to buy that spin bike for you. Come, let's go. And you be the example. You can't sit there with your beer boop and you do nothing. No, that's not how it works. You are the king, priest, and prophet. It's not your women that pray, it's you that pray. It's you that seek the Lord. It is you that worship Jesus Christ. It is you that set the foundation. Then a lady can follow that man. Come on, are you guys there? But we need to know who we're going to marry. Because that man can't run back to his mom. Come on. That's why the Bible says you leave your mom and your dad. You cleave. Save me, leave. And cleave. There's some people that are cleaving, but they're not leaving. They have to leave to cleave. We need to understand this because it is important in 2024 more than ever because a healthy family looks like a healthy society. A healthy society looks like a healthy South Africa. We need a man and a woman that understand who they are, understand where they are going, understand what the vision is, understand what the mission is. Come on. Come on, I'm preaching good. But the woman, you have to, how do you handle that woman? Are you harsh of her? Are you treating her with love? Look at Jesus. Jesus washes His bride of His words. Ephesians 4.29 Jesus gives His life to His wife, which is the church. Are we willing to do the same? Come on, are you with me? But we have to understand that women are essential to the plan of God. Women are so essential to the plan of God that God made a deal with a woman before He sent His Son. The first evangelist was a woman, her name was Mary. But we need in this society today, we need men and women of worth. Men and women that have got backbone. Men and women that know who they are, know where they're going, know where they are from. You can't stay in your history. There's nothing there. Go towards your destiny. But you have to understand who you are. Understand how much you are. You are bought by the blood. That's why in my family, I've got three girls. I've got one very simple rule. Well, a few rules for them. I'll give you two. First rule, they've never been touched. Not one of them. They're pure. 
They're holy. They're set apart. Why? I taught them their worth. Second rule I have for them. I said, you will marry nobody unless you have the green number one. You can say, whoa, why pastor? Because my, my woman, my children, which are women. Everybody in my house is female, by the way. Wife is female. My daughter is female. My dog is female. Everything is female. It's a true story. But I, I have a rule for them. I'm like, hey, you have high worth. When I take them out, I don't take them out to El Chipo. I'll take them out to the place called of the Valley of El Shaddai. That's right. Why? Because I don't want El Chipo to come somewhere in El Future. And woo them with cheap words. They have to understand their worth. So I've modeled their worth to them. Yeah. Come on, are you there? Jesus did the same. So that we don't won't sell ourselves for less. Every woman that sits here, you dreamt when you were small that you are a princess, right? You are a princess still. Let nobody take your crown. I'll say that again. Let nobody take your crown. Let nobody take that crown of perfection that Jesus Christ gave you. Let no man rip the dignity off you. Sometimes when I hear ladies talk of how men treat them, I think to myself, dear Lord Jesus, I can understand, quickly put up for me 1 Peter 3, 7, why, why some prayers are not being answered. 1 Peter 3, 7 as I'm busy getting it up, says this, if we don't treat women well, God literally don't answer prayer. Look at that, husbands. Likewise, dwell of them of understanding, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel, as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers may not be hindered. Gentlemen, I want to encourage you today, open the door still. Buy the flowers still. It's not old school. It's called being in love. When a woman speaks to you, I want to help you here because I, I have got good practice. I've got four of them in my house. Four ladies, I can tell you, they talk a lot. And I've learned something. Can I just teach you one or two things that I've learned? One. When ladies talk, they express their emotions. They don't need an answer. But when men hear, they want to answer. Now you are stepping into the trap. Don't answer. All that you do is smile. Not every now and again. And say, yes, of course. Sure, honey. It is as you say. I've just saved your life with four simple words. You don't even need to listen. You just need to make as if you listen. I've done this successfully for many years, I can tell you. That's easy. <laughs> Did you get it? Write it down, guys. Come on, take out the note. note just say yes, sure. I hear you. Of course. Absolutely, honey. Just that. Done well. If you do that, successful marriage for you. Don't ever step into the trap of how does this make me look? You look beautiful. You look wonderful. You look gorgeous. You look amazing. Just say it like that. Does this pants make me look fat? No. It was the McDonald's. But don't, you can't say that. You know, if you, if you treat your wife well, she'll be a great blessing to you. It's true. We must treat women well. 
Long before there was governments, there was a family structure that God put in place. So let not government tell you how to run your family. Now let the man be the priest, the king, the prophet. Let the woman be the helper. And let the children follow the ways of God because you follow it. Don't send the kids to church and you stay at home. Be the example. Get up in the morning. Serve the Lord your God. And you will be blessed all the days of your life. Not because you're perfect, but because you're faithful. That's what the Scripture says to us. Maybe one or two last thoughts for you that I just have for you is that in this hour that we are in, women are our incubator. I said it before, but I'll say it again. Women are incubators because they will multiply whatever you give them. Give them a seed, they give you a baby. Give them some groceries. Give them a list of things, they'll bake you a cake. Incubators. Give them trouble, they give you hell. <laughs> Incubators. But women of God, I want to encourage you, be a Proverbs 31 woman. Be a woman that builds your house. Be a woman that your husband longs to come back to. Be a, and I'm, I'm on the side of men here. Listen, honeys, women, please, don't be a nagging wife. Because your husband is going to drive around that block 50 times. Be a woman that loves your husband. Ladies, if I can give you a tip, when your husband comes home, be there, greet him, say, it's so good to see you. Thank you for coming home. I love you. Even to this day, 19 years into my marriage, my wife still waits for me. Still waits, still happy that I'm there. Still happy that I came home. Ladies, do the same. Make it easy for your man to come home. Are you there? If he gives you trouble, slip a, a sleeping pill in his... It is. <laughs> oh, don't do that. But you know what? I believe this society has made divorce too easy. When you marry somebody, it's called covenant. It's until death to us part. Are you there? And if you are divorced here today, I want to say to you the heart of Jesus. Divorce is not a label. You are not what has happened to you. Divorce is not a sickness, nor a disease. You can love again, and Jesus can add again. Are you there? Come on, let's just have grace here. The Lord gave me something during this week that I found. I wrote it down many, many, many weeks ago. A human being has got 46 chromosomes. Do you know that? We've got 23 on our father's side and 23 on our mother's side. In the natural, I wrote down, I said, I, I'm tall on my father's side. My dad was tall, but I've got dark hair on my mother's side because my dad's hair was light. I'm strong on my father's side, but I'm resilient on my mother's side. But when we look to the spiritual matters, it's, we can say it like this. Jesus walked in the streets of Jerusalem on his mother's side, but he walked on the water on his father's side. He walked through the door on his mother's side, but he walked through the wall on his father's side. He would eat fish on his mother's side, but he multiplied, multiplied the bread on his father's side. He was a carpenter on his mother's side. He was placed on the cross and he came off the cross on his father's side. He was put in a tomb in his mother's side, but the grave and hell couldn't keep him on his father's side. 
They put nails in his hands on his mother's side, but he came off that cross and defeated hell, hate, and the grave on his father's side. As much as we are from our mother's side, we are also from our father's side. And we have an incorruptible seed that dwells inside of us. We are supernatural natural because we have the living God that lives inside of us. Come on, are you there? Give Jesus just 10 seconds of praise. Lastly, I want to encourage you this morning that don't let days like this go by without a spirit of reconciliation. What do I mean by that? Mother's days and family days like this is good days where you can reconcile. Pick up the phone, make the call. It's not worth it. I'm honest now. It's not worth it to go through, your, through a, a segment of your life and miss out on family. If your mom has messed up, if your dad has messed up, forgive them, let them go. It's better to forgive and let them go then let that unforgiveness become bitterness, that bitterness become anger, that anger turns into hatred. And at the end of life, you just steal from yourself. Come on, are you there? Let's be a people that forgive quickly, release people quickly. Yes, Lord. Some of our parents were not perfect, but we are not perfect. Some parents tried their best with the information that they had at hand. Say that again. Some parents tried their best with the information they had. You are more informed, therefore have more grace. Yeah, I'll say that, Lord. The more informed you become, place of information is not a place of arrogance because the more informed you are the easier you need to quantify it for somebody else look at a doctor just for a moment a doctor when he wants to explain to you what's wrong with your body he doesn't draw for you all the biological names and the intrinsic detail of a human body to explain to you what's wrong he draws a little simple picture for you and he says, see here, I'm going to cut you there. I'm going to take that out and you're going to be fine. And all you say is, yes. Right? Why? Wisdom in its truest form tells stories. Look at Jesus. Jesus knew more than all of us. Yet he did not make the gospel an intellectual showcase for few. He made it simple for all should tell you about the true nature of wisdom. Yeah, come on, give Jesus 10 seconds of praise. And so this morning, lastly, I want to say to every woman that is in the house, ladies, we appreciate you. We appreciate you in Power Church. Thank you for being women of worth. Thank you for being women that know God. I often will see ladies being dropped off here at the gate by, them, by their men. And the man goes, I don't know where, but the lady comes to church. I pray that that changes into the future. I pray that men will follow their ladies to church. For the men that are here, I want to salute you. Thank you for being godly men. Thank you for being men that stand for truth. Men that stand for the Lord. It takes guts to be a godly man. I want to say thank you this morning. Thank you for loving Jesus well and loving your family well and being a man of honor. The Lord will bless you and keep you and the Lord will keep you in place. He'll make His countenance shine upon you because you stand for what is right. And lastly, I want to pray for you this morning and this will be my prayer. My prayer will be that your families will will step into the acceleration of God's blessing in this hour. That you will step into the newness that God has for us. I just came out of the States and I can tell you this, there's something new that God is busy doing. The goodness of the Lord shall prevail. 
Let me say that again. The goodness of the Lord shall prevail. God has got a plan and it looks like you. Don't let the enemy tell you otherwise. God has got a plan and it looks like you. God is going to help us and God is already helping us. He's already ahead of us already. And so I want to pray for you just this morning and then I just want one or two things as Pastor Stefan comes. I want to ask this morning as I pray, I want to especially pray for men and women, husband and wife that are here this morning. If you are here this morning as husband and wife, won't you stand for me? Won't you stand if you are here as husband and wife? I want you, there we are, I want you just hold the hands if you can. Let's pray. Father, I want to pray this morning in the precious name of Jesus. Father, we uphold covenant in this place, in this day, in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I bless every covenant that is present here this morning. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you place your hand upon these covenants. And Lord, that these men and women will know that you are the God that is with them. Father, I pray, Lord, be gracious towards them. Turn your face towards them. Have mercy unto them. Father, I pray for them and their households that they and their households shall be blessed by the Lord. I pray, Father, add to them and add to them without any sorrow. Touch their bodies, heal their minds in Jesus' name. And Father, I want to pray lastly this morning. May your grace be sufficiently supplied all the days of their lives over them. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And all God's people say, amen, amen and amen. Amen and amen. You're welcome to be seated. Just one, at, just one or two things from my side. The first thing is, is that this weekend coming, is Pentecost weekend. That's next Sunday. And on Sunday evening, because it's Pentecost weekend, we're going to have our normal church service, 8 and 10, and then 5 o'clock. But 5 o'clock, we're going to have a prayer attack time. And through that, we want to lay hands on families and get everybody baptized in the Holy Spirit again. And so I want to ask you to please make a date of that, to please mark your calendars for that, and to join me this Sunday evening coming, that you and I, as we celebrate Pentecost, that we can do so in a time of prayer. That's next weekend, the 19th of May, but also a time where we can lay hands and make sure that we are filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Listen, we have to be baptized in the Spirit. We have to be baptized in fire. We have to be baptized in love. We are get the baptism of repentance. But you and I need to be overflowing with the Holy Spirit and with power. Say amen to that. Come on, you can give Jesus 10 seconds. You're welcome. And as Pastor Stefan comes, last thing from my side, uh, the book Kingdom Business CEO is available in the foyer. There's just a few left. These things are flying. So you're welcome to go and get it. We wrote it to get you prosperous and wealthy. Amen. In every area of your life. I pray today will be a special day. I pray that you and your families will spend time. And I pray that you'll feel the hand of grace upon you. The best is yet to come. Look at your neighbors. Say, the best is yet to come. No, look at that with more authority. Say, the best is yet to come. Amen. And Bar, I'll see you tonight. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Stefan. Amen. Just smile at somebody right now. You look so much better when you smile. And a happy Mother's Day to all the moms. As would we are just ready to, to honor the Lord this morning. I don't know how many of you as a, as a husband did something for your wife. For somebody as, or children to the parents. You know, how many of the moms received actually a gift? Let me just do this. 
And the rest who's, who's not, we just made a guilt trip on you right now. But you've got time to redeem yourself. But you know what's the beautiful thing about receiving a gift? If that sense of appreciation, it's not just the words to saying that, no, thank you, you are the most beautiful mom in the world and whatever, because it's, it, you just say a lot of beautiful things or a card. The thing is, when you, when you bring something out and there's, there's so much heart into the gift that went out, isn't it true? If there's so much thought that goes into the gift and you receive this gift and you open it up and you're like, wow, this is so wonderful. See, that's, that's the thing when it comes to giving is that you can take out your tithe and your offering and you can give it to the Lord, but it's so much better if your heart goes with your giving because you can... You can give without loving, but you can't love without giving. And when we say we honour the Lord and we love the Lord, I want to encourage you this morning, as you do that, when you honour the Lord this morning, as we go into the different places to go and honour the Lord, I want us to, as we do that right now, at least smile, look joyous. The Bible says, decide in your heart what you're going to give to the Lord and do it cheerfully. God delights in a cheerful giver. So when you do that this morning, I want to ask you this one thing as I ask you to stand as you're ready to honour the Lord with your tithe and your offering. Can you get that ready in your hand? If you're giving electronically, hold up your phone or your card or whatever you need to do. I would like to please invite you to stand as would we honour the Lord this morning with your tithe and your offering and your giving as we present you to the Lord together. Please note in this church, we believe and we pray that every single person in this church will be blessed. Not just out of the area that it, it, it looks good, but that you can be a blessing and the people will look to your life and say, those are the blessed of the Lord. So as you're ready to do that, Father, thank You that we can pray over every single person, every family, every person who faithfully ties and offers. God, we pray over them. Increase them. God, expand them. Thank You that Your favour rests upon them. God, we want to pray that there shall be employment over every single person. Thank You for business and contracts. Thank You for promotions, raises and bonuses. God, thank You that we can speak the favour of the Lord over every single person who faithfully sows, sows into the fruitful soil of this household of faith. God, we speak over them they shall be blessed in their coming and they shall be blessed in their going to the glory of Jesus. If you receive that, won't you say amen and amen. As we do that, can we quickly uh, take some time this morning? You're welcome to right around the auditorium. There's some wonderful friendly volunteers that would love to assist you.